Uh, Anne Whittigam and Owen Jones, thank you very much for joining us tonight. And of course, Anne, we saw there you spent a week filming with Mick Philpott and his family. What were they like? Well, of course, my job wasn't to carry out a social survey of the domestic lives of the Philpott family. It was to get Mick Philpott into work. That was my job. And what kind week. of man did he strike you as? He was very manipulative. He manipulated the benefit system. He manipulated the women. He certainly controlled the women. There was no doubt in my mind about that. He had plenty of latent aggression in him um, uh, and a, a lot of pent-up anger. And the state supported his lifestyle at 100%. How much blame should the welfare state take for what's happened? Do you think, oh, look, there's plenty the welfare state can be blamed for. It can be blamed for allowing him to be work shy. Uh, it can be uh, blamed for um, enabling him to live the life that he lived solely on benefit and living off the rest of us. And for the fact that he had two children a year and the state just went on meekly paying out and out, it can be blamed for all of that. What it cannot be blamed for is the deaths of those children. That was due solely to Mick Philpott's wickedness and recklessness. It was not due to the welfare system. And we do need to disentangle the two or we do ourselves a disservice. But, so a clear definition then, but the welfare state have a lot to answer for. And we've, we've seen the front page of the Daily Mail as well today, Owen, and Whittacombe is not alone in her thinking that there is some truth to this, isn't there? Well, I have to say that Daily Mail front page is a sickening and perverse attempt to use the deaths of six little children whose lives were cruelly snuffed out to make a political point and to incite hatred. Last week, for example, a man was uh, convicted for life for killing his two parents in order to extort £230,000 of their inheritance. Inheritance, of course, was not to blame for that. Neither do we blame uh, middle-class professionals as a whole for the GP Harold Shipman, who was a serial killer. This man represents nobody but himself. So the state has nothing Absolute to blame. This is a man who killed his six kids. And the idea unemployed people in this country have anything to do with this man is, well, frankly, as sick as it is ridiculous. And just to point out, even before this, atrocious um, act uh, occurred, how unrepresentative he was. There were 1.35 million families in this country in which at least one adult claims out of work benefits. Of those, 190 are families above 10. This family are in no way, even before this, no way representative of the welfare state. And I do think it is a new low for enemies of the welfare state to use this sickening crime in order to advance that agenda. And when it comes, it's wrong to tarnish many, many thousands of families with the same brush as this one. Well, I don't think they are tarnished with it. I don't think that even the mail was suggesting that all families on welfare uh, live like the full pots or act like the full pots. And the mail suggested no such thing. But as I've said, I think we should disentangle two things. There is what is due to the welfare state, and that is the indulgence of the work shy. And there is what is due solely to Mick Philpott, and that was the deaths of those children. And you cannot blame the state for his act. Just to come back to the point about the work shy, I mean, tabloids in this press relentlessly hunt down the most extreme and shameless example of scroungers. I'll tell you just how desperate people are in this country for work. Costa Coffee in Nottingham the other week opened up a store, eight near minimum wage jobs. Do you know how many people applied for those jobs? 1,701 people. That desperation for work for people on benefits is never shown in the media, and instead we just get the freak show extremes shown as though they're the tip of the iceberg, but they're not. OK, I know you're talking about him as, as being a freak show, but he is in the headlines today. Um, and and Dickham, what do you think the state should have done? Should it have intervened? You mean you described his children as being like meal tickets. Well, they were meal tickets. OK, what would you have done in order to stop this I kind of story I, I would have said to Mick Fulpott. Uh, and in the world of Whittacombe, I would still say to many lesser cases of Mick Philpottism, uh, fine, uh, we will not abandon the children, we will continue to keep the children, but therefore you must do all day, every day, voluntary work in return for your benefit. And when the United States introduced that in some areas, the impact was huge because, of course, people faced with the choice between doing what they don't want to do for benefit and doing something better for wages. They tend to choose the second. What would you have done, Owen Jones? Would you have just kept hand handing him that money? This is a man who should have been locked away for a lot longer before when, in the 1970s, he stabbed his girlfriend 17 times and then attacked her mother. He wasn't jailed for that long. I think it was seven years. But what should the it, state have done every time he had a new child? What we year? should have done what, what have is done? intervened with social services. The problem at the moment, we, that our social services aren't properly well funded. We need social services which go into cases like this when we have a man with a clear history of violence 
and of aggression to but intervene. He and Jordan, okay, didn't he? Yeah, he him? did. And, and, and we also have to disentangle this as well. Um, clearly, those children suffered at his hands and in a deeply reckless act. But I saw him with the children, and so did lots of other people over a much longer period of time than I can claim. Uh, those kids were clean. They were fed. They went to school. They got to school on time. There was no absenteeism. What exactly were social services this is supposed man, to be intervening on? This is a man with, a cl with literally a violent record. He was locked away for attempting to murder no his girlfriend. No record of violence to his girlfriend. And furthermore, as yeah. you have pointed out, you saw him in front of others yeah. talking to women in that household in the most demeaning and degrading way. The reality is, it is certainly true, that no amount of intervention can stop people who are determined to kill their children in this way. That will always happen, but we have to do everything we can. And that yeah. means, in, the, in a case where someone with that history yeah, of violence, no, no, no. where we have some intervention to try and do everything we can, this even if where, it's not possible. This is where I think you have to take your own advice and watch your language. You've just said, determined to kill his children. That is not what the law found. The law found manslaughter, not murder. Um, it, no, he it was, was determined stupid... to set fire to his oh, house he to in, a, in a situation which he would well have known, well have known, would have put, placed his children yeah. in utter, utter well, he was um, found, danger. We have to say that he was found guilty of murder. He was found guilty murder, of murder. And there is a clear difference between no, the two. No, he didn't murder. However, I have to say, if you set fire in that way, this, we can't let, make excuses for this person. If you set fire no, to a house in that way... That, nor can you say that it was foreseeable. The okay. fact is, he but, had 17 children. No, I'm going to say there's 17 children. I'm not standing up for him. I'm just standing up for social services. He had 17 children and not a record of violence towards any of them. Let's just pretend the welfare state doesn't exist. What would have happened to Mick Philpott in that situation? Oh, Mick Philpott would never have had all those children. Not true. Mick, Philp Mick Philpott would have had no system to play. Not and that's what he... Many might, but what he was trying to do was to play a system. It wouldn't have been so there to Anne, play. Can you tell me why is it since the introduction of the welfare state, the size of families in this country, decade after decade, has got smaller and smaller? And if you were going to go back to a time when these sorts of large families were typical, it would have been in the 19th century when those sorts of large extended families were more than common and we did not have a welfare state to support yes, them. Yes, I'll, I'll tell you exactly why the, uh, the numbers have gone down. Uh, first of all, the introduction of birth control. Secondly, much better education. The welfare, the welfare the, state no, has not produced a situation where people are churning out kids. That yeah. is not the case. I haven't okay. said so. You're I've being got... rather stupid at the no, moment. No, I'm not. You're yes, being you ridiculous. You're being and... like the male no. and you're trying to take a situation... And you're saying he wouldn't have been of... able to support those children yeah. without I'm the introduction of the welfare state, he, but in the past he they did. didn't say he wouldn't have been. I said he, knowing him, taking his mentality and what he was doing and why he was having the children, which was all about benefits, he wouldn't have been able right. to do that. And yet had we that know system not before been the there. welfare state, people were more than capable okay, of having well. the l large families without the sort of support that exists today. One That's final the fact. question to you both. What kind of effect is all this going to have on his children who are still alive? I want to start with you. Well, look, this is the most traumatising experience any child can go through. Obviously, those who cared for them put them needlessly and recklessly in the, in, in the path of harm. And I just hope now, I desperately hope, that they can be given the care and support they need in order to get on with their lives and hopefully make the best of what they've got. Anne, you met them, right? Uh, I met them, uh, but briefly. Uh, but I think it will be particularly hard for the five children who lived with those six children. It's going to be extremely hard on them. I think the older children uh, have a much better chance um, uh, of, of surviving. Um, but I think the younger ones are going to need help, yes. Anne Widdicombe and Owen Jones, thank you very much for your time.